Audio's working. There we go. Hello and good Thursday morning. It's the my last stream of the week, and how are you all today? Tomorrow is Friday. We should all be thrilled about this. I get to go play with puppies on Saturday. That's my happy thing. Hey, you shooter. Hey, numbat. Hey, hey, Robin. Hello, everybody. How many? How many is everybody's? I'm not seeing many other everybody's. Good afternoon, Robin. Hey, Jay. <laughs> I am Rathmore TV. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I don't know what Pokemon I would be, though. I'm not sure. I don't know them well enough yet. Although I do like Pikachu rather more than I should. Yes, I get to go play with puppies because one of my jobs as uh, working with the breed that I work with is uh, as a litter evaluator. So every once in a while, when a breeder near me has a litter, I get to go drive up to Oklahoma and uh, essentially put puppies through a series of 10 tests that lets us evaluate them on their, uh, like how well they resist stress and how sociable they are and how submissive they are or assertive, you know, how independent they might be, how trainable. We have a series of tests. We put 80, eight week old puppies, so cute, so cute. We even have a little puppy maze. It's amazing. So, and I didn't mean that pun, but it worked. Um, but yeah, so that's what I do. Like that's one of my off time jobs, so to speak. Um, is to go and evaluate little puppies. And then we also evaluate the structure for which puppies uh, should be bred in the future and which shouldn't be. And temperament, of course, also plays into that. So, yeah. So, yeah, I get to go play with puppies on Saturday, and that's my big happy. Yes. Hello, Achilles Blade. I don't see a painting big in there, Achilles Blade. You gave everybody else. Obviously, he's like an Ed and Ron and Dave and John, uh, you know, person. I twisted him a lot. I'm just giving you crap, Achilles, you're good. You don't need to be, you don't need to have the Anne represent. <laughs> I'm here, I'm representing myself. Hey, WC War. Uh, yeah, Corgis and Shilohs actually go together really well. Several of our owners have both breeds, Miss Um But yeah, yeah, Shiloh puppy playtime, yeah. I don't get to play with them right away, but I get to play with them afterwards. Of course, they're very tired afterwards, too. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot of brain power for a little tiny puppy to expend. At eight weeks old, they're really just babies. So, yeah, hey, Coops. All right, so today we are not painting puppies, but we are painting a Velociraptor because I was like, I need to paint white. What do I want to paint white? I'll paint a Velociraptor white. Hi, Sentimental Minis. Good to see you. Hi, Numbat. Yeah, <laughs> Corgi. Three Corgis? Is that it? Or is that the binary Corgi? Corgi and one. I love the Corgi emoji, though. I do love that the world has caught on that corgis are one of the cutest breeds. Hey, skinny tea. Yay. Morning, morning, morning. All right, let me see here. While you guys do that, the one thing that I forgot to do today is that I was actually going to, let's see if the Faraday cage is working up here or if I can uh, get a little bit of... I want to look up an albino alligator and make sure that I've got. Come on, I know there are albino, albino, albino alligators out there. Oh, okay, yeah, so there we go. Yeah, they're pretty yellowy. They could have a bit of gray in them too. Depends, depends on the lighting probably, how they look. But yeah, so yes, I'm gonna do an albino velociraptor. I may actually have to switch up my colors a little bit because they're a little more gray than I thought they were. Although some of these, like I said, may be adjusted. Um, yeah, some of them are really yellow and some of them are not. And the ones that aren't really yellow in photos, you always have to wonder if people have uh, photoshopped them. Because in reality, albino reptiles usually are quite yellow. So yeah, we will do it. We will, uh, we will do a red eyeball on an albino alligator. Or an albino velociraptor. Yeah, I agree with more TV. There really is no bad reason to paint a Velociraptor. This is one of the Bones 4 ones. I thought it was released, but then Justin went looking for the SKU, um, and he couldn't find it, which means it's soon to be released, but it's not quite there yet. So our happy little Velociraptor will be released soon. 81. 81? Yeah, 44081. 44081. Thank you, Collins. Yeah, I had a list of those from Ron. 44081. Yay! Okay, well now we have his number, 44081, right there on the screen for you, courtesy of Mr. Collins, who is so very useful that way. Ha 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 ha. 
See, everybody's an albino. Maybe you're right. Maybe we should have just put up albino velociraptor on the subject line and you're free to change it, Justin. Maybe that will get people to actually watch the show. So, yay. Hashtag bacon. I used to eat a lot of bacon, but my new diet is lower on protein, so I am no longer shoveling down bacon as a snack. All right. Excellent. Yeah, Justin has been adjusting us so that, adjusting us? He's been adjusting us uh, so that our color and everything looks better. So, here we are. So originally, I was going to start with this triad, and some albino reptiles are indeed this triad. Um, when you see the really yellowy ones, snakes and alligators usually, are the ones which are going to be like that. And we've got our focus on our Velociraptor. So those are a little bit fuzzed out, sorry, but we want to be focusing on Mr. Raptor. Um, yeah, exa exactly, Rathmar. Singing, laughing, roaring. Okay, and now since you said singing, I hereby require us to cut the hat off of the dice guy bard and his loot, or sculpt a new one, or buy the accessory pack, and have the Velociraptor with his loot, strumming his loot with a bardic hat. That has to be a thing now. Are we good with that? Somebody's going to do it, right? Somebody needs to do it and post it. Because Velociraptor Bard has to be a thing. Senti sentient Velociraptor Bard. Yeah. A friendly little dinosaur. On it, John? Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Because, <laughs> you know, that would make this the perfect demo figure if he was just wearing some clothes and had, like, something else. You know, so then a, a perky bardish hat with a plume uh, and a lute would be a great start on that. Because then you could demo, use him to demo uh, painting wood texture, you could use him to demo painting cloth and even feathers, and, of course, painting Velociraptor. Yes, go Reef John. All right. Oh, it needs a black cane. But then it needs a top hat. But that, see, that limits its utility. You know, you're crossing the streams there, Gantrell. You, you either get the, the Velociraptor with top hat and cane, and maybe little spats, or you get the Velociraptor bard. You, or you get both, if John feels really inspired. Um, yeah. So anyway, here we go. And so those of you who have looked up albino alligator on the internet know that some of them are very yellow. Look in image search, really. And some of them are more like grayish yellow. You could go with either. I'm going to show you some of the colors that I use. Like, you could possibly go with a desert sand instead. I wouldn't go with that. You could mix in some weathered stone. Aged bone is a really good one. Here, let me get some of these colors down where you can see them. So, okay, one of the key things in starting with white is you don't want to shade it as dark as you think, but you also don't want to go as light as you think. So, um, yeah, but that limits the colors I can paint him. Like, you know, but top hats are usually black. They're kind of boring, um, whereas a bardic hat with a plume can be any color. Uh, so I'm voting for the hat with a plume, personally. But anyway, or both. We can get both. Uh, so you want to start actually reasonably dark, uh, like stained ivory, which is not a light color, you will agree. It is kind of in the mid to middle light uh, kind of uh, shade. Um, and then other colors you could start with as your base coat are all in that kind of tonal area. If you put their, their butts together, you can see that they are all about the same shade of light versus dark. And if you want a blue-white, you could go with uh, Moonstone Blue from the Kickstarter, or you could actually go with Snow Shadow, which is almost the same as Moonstone. It's more gray. It has violet in it. So it depends on where you want to go with that. Um, so you could pick any of these colors to be a white base coat. Here, let me turn them. There. And if you felt that you, um, you needed further shading, you could go down to like wolf gray or, um, or, or stone gray with weathered stone. But I do it only very selectively and only in the darker, darkest shadow areas. Um, same with aged bone. You could use a little bit of its shadow, sh um, the, the shadow bone. Um, you could use that, but very sparingly and only in the darkest parts. Um, desert sand, obviously, you could go down to desert stone. Stained ivory, if you're going to go down at all, which I don't recommend, but if you do, driftwood brown 9162 is a great shadow for stained ivory. Um, nope, Dance of Death is only on Wednesday. The dragon that never ends. Oh, yeah, Darth Abacus Bot has it wrong. Are you correcting that, Justin? Yep. Okay, good. Yes, a stylish monocle would go with the top hat. Go for it, Buglips. Like, 
Everybody else can totally uh, go for the top hat one. I just really want a barred one. Uh, yeah, Dance of Death shrunk. And also Lost Wings. Um, also, of course, <laughs> yes. I say, old boy, those park visitors look rather tasty. Wouldn't you concur? Um, and do you have any Grey Poupon? All right. That was an old, old 80s joke for those of you who get those, who remember those commercials. But anyway, the other thing you can do, obviously, since you've been watching me paint Dance of Death on Wednesdays at 3, is you could mix any of these colors. You could take a gray, gray brown, or, um, or a yellowy tan, and you could add some white into it until it got to the state here, like I do with the blue liner uh, and white mixture that I'm using for the dragon on uh, Wednesdays. So yeah. So there we go, and with that, we will go back. Yeah, maybe I will do desert sand instead of stained ivory. I don't know. That could be fun. Desert sand has a little more gray in it. Maybe I'll just try that out. There. Excellent. So let's go back to the triad I'm actually going to use. So the key here with white, in my experience, is to, in general, start dark and work light. Um, starting with your mid-tone and trying to work down sometimes means you're too timid with your shadows. Um, and you do need shadows on this. You do not. A lot of people start with a really pale color and want to highlight it with white and they're done. Um, that's not really, doesn't work the best. It's not optimal. It's suboptimal. There we go. Um, so I don't know. Hmm, I could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try for a break instead of using a more more predictable triad. Let's do that. Let's do desert sand creamy ivory and see how it looks. That sounds great. So we're gonna paint the whole Velociraptor in the shadow color. Everything. Do 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 do. Go crazy Velociraptor. Oh, I may have thinned my paint too much. I did watch. I did watch this mini. But these slightly harder bones, sometimes, um, if I thin it, it, it sometimes it's like, well, well, I don't know. Looks like it might stick, though. I might need to put two coats on because I thinned it. Maybe I'll just add a little more paint. We're almost to Friday, Reaper John. Of course, everybody's having a good day. Since I'm base coating, I'm not too concerned with staying in focus. You all kind of know what base coating looks like. Um, do you have a uh, four scale? Yeah, you do. Can you can you uh, grab that four scale off the wheel and use it as a scale for the people? Oh yeah, he's a nice big. Uh, I'd say Jurassic Park sized Velociraptor. That's that's Jurassic Park. Right, right, right. It's not a little one for sure. Do do. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. All right, Velociraptor. I did try to remove some mold lines before I did this one, but I did not get them all, so apologies. This is a cute Velociraptor, though. He's so simple. He looks like he was going to paint up so well. Do, 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 back. We'll even paint the back of the model. We'll try to paint it all. Mm -hmm. And this may not be dark enough. We'll see. We'll see. Sometimes you do want a little bit more of a dramatic shadow, but we'll see. Because once I put the white on him, he, look, he looks really light right now. But once I start highlighting up, then this shadow is going to appear a lot darker. So I have to remind myself that. JJ Trocking. Um, uh, turkeys. Turkeys are pretty big, but they're only about half this size. Um, several, there were several raptor species though, so, and we also have to remind ourselves that we have not found all the fossils. Like, when we say something with, where we estimate, some dinosaurs we have a very large representative collection of. I don't know how much, how much velociraptor we've got. Or if we have found raptor uh, skeletons from everywhere, like that they might have been. So, with dinosaurs I tend to take the modern research as like, you know, take it with a bit of a, a, a hint of salt because... 
is we're working with things that we have managed to find and and of that you know it's things that have managed to die in such a way as to make them findable so we do not have a uh, very statistically accurate appearance you know uh, estimate on some of these dinosaurs in other words there is nothing to say that there could not be larger velociraptors out there somewhere we just haven't found them and when we do find them, it'll be like on the cover of National Geographic because everybody loves velociraptors and they're going to be like, gee, big, gigantic velociraptor found. Hey. All right, I'm just making sure. Do you get to meet all the Twitch, Twitch streamers on tour? If we're around. I know the other day John came through my office and people wanted to meet Kiri, but I had taken her out on her walk. So for the tour, it really depends on the time of day you come, I would say. And what everybody is doing, right? So, all right. So, oh, I missed a spot. I missed a spot. So, yeah. So now we're going to kind of put this to the test and see as we start to put our highlights on. If you get nervous that, you know, this really isn't dark enough and you feel like it's not going to be a good enough shadow, you could put a wash over the model at this point. But I would advise against it because I really feel like this is going to be dark enough. I uh, usually use a similar triad for white cloth um, on the Templar army than this was what I used. This, uh, this makeshift triad, I pretty much drop yellowed bone out. Just use these two and highlight it with pure white. So for a good, warm, creamy linen cloth, these guys. We went a little grayer here because I noticed that several of the reptiles, the albino uh, alligators I was looking at, seemed a little more gray. All right, he is drying, so I'm going to make sure that my paint consistency is correct. Ah, the six-foot raptor a la Jurassic Park was not found until after the movie was released. See, that's what I was meaning, Scientologist, is like, there probably are bigger raptors out there, and we just haven't found them, or maybe we've just found one. So, and it may not be, um, they may not all be velociraptors, they may be a different type of raptor. You know, there's all sorts of, there's probably all sorts of species out there. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. All right, so let me check. I'm going to test it now to see how this color looks because we started pretty yellowish, but I'm going to see. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be different enough to start. Yes, I think so. We're going to go with this. All right, so you want to take up, since you started with your shadow, but we know that if we want this raptor to look white, we have to keep that shadow in only in very small areas because we want most of the raptor to be light, close to white. Um, so that it carries that white appearance. And normally I would be painting more across the green on these muscles if I was really layering. Um, but I need to get, I want to get a lot done on this stream, so I'm going to go fast. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I forgot to silence my phone. One second. I just realized that. We do not want somebody calling me in the middle of this. Usually I have it silenced, but I was waiting but, for but an that's important never, call. that's never stopped Ed. Uh, or Ron. Uh, I always have my phone silenced. The only reason it was unsilenced was that I was waiting on a call that was important. And still am, but I'm not going to answer the, the call during the stream. So, All right. So, so you can see already, even by just doing those highlights, that haunch looks a lot closer to white. And you can still see your shadows. So, yeah, it would be cool to have a feathered dinosaur. The problem is, Tiger Stark, is that uh, a lot of people's, vi it doesn't match up with a lot of people's vision of what a dinosaur really is. And so it's, uh, it, there's definitely a group of people that would love to see it. And then there's a big group of people who would be like, that's not my dinosaur. So, but yes, I kind of hope we do do a couple of feathered ones to see how they go over. It would be neat and fun to paint. I want bright colored dinosaurs. It's like when, uh, when they started doing, like, finding, finally finding evidence of, like, colors on dinosaurs and, like, that they were probably more brightly colored than we think. Um, and then suddenly, like, all the pictures that were uh, coming out in scientific literature, like, did a 180 and suddenly everything was bright where it used to be just greens and browns. There we go. All right. So, nice haunch there. We do want to paint even the underside of areas with this... Uh, first highlight just because again you've got bouncing light up from the environment and although it wouldn't be 
extreme, like it would be on metal or a shiny surface. Although who knows, maybe scales are kind of shiny. Um, often on reptiles that have just shed, they are. But we do want something down there. We don't want to just leave it. So I will use usually just a little bit of highlight. And mostly I'll stick the highlight on the top of the tail, although I'm going to be covering a lot of this with pure white or a mixture of uh, creamy ivory and pure white. It's all, you just don't want it to be just like kind of sitting there. You want something of interest. And there would be probably a little bit of a highlight. Hey, Valandar, yay, it's a sub. Justin, what are we going to do about the sub thing? Should I start counting? Uh, let's start oh. that Monday. Monday. Also, thank okay. you, uh, Grin No Cookies, for the raid. That's awesome. Oh, yay. Um, but yeah, let's start it Monday, and then we will uh, we will go from there. All right. We'll, we'll explain it further. Although, I guess we could explain it more at the end of this once we have kind of... Right, because we talked about it yesterday, but it was on the wrong show, so... Correct. Because we, that was the show we had, so that was the show we used. So I'm just kind of blocking in muscle groups right now. Um, I'm not worrying about blending, because mostly I want to show you guys the colors and the area that the colors take up. It's kind of the point of this one for me. Um, and just kind of like show you how a bone colored velociraptor becomes an albino velociraptor. But as you can see, we are, we are lightning. We are getting up there. Uh, yeah, they probably have just right vista, like not flying feathers, but just, yeah, accent feathers, uh, feathers that used to be functional and that that's right. The dinosaurs like on the head and stuff. I am not up on my dinosaur research. I used to be a huge dinosaur fanatic. But then uh, I got into dog genetics and the next day it just took everything. It took over everywhere. So all my scientific stuff that I used to put into like dinosaurs, I now put into canine genetics. Because why not, really? I'm permitted to have odd hobbies. So I'm rather an odd person. All right. Do -do -do. That's true. Although, isn't it specific feathers that are better at insulation? Like, you know, penguins obviously have very close feathers. Um, and the, a layer of down and stuff like that. A significant layer of down. Thank you, Lucidio666, for the Twitch Prime. Ooh, also, yay, sub. by the way, and this is the first time in a long time, we actually, uh, I came in this morning, and our resting uh, number of subs was actually above 1,500. Wow. So, so does that mean another big giveaway is going to happen? I'm saying that if we can maintain that until tomorrow at 3 o'clock, guys, we will give away another uh, big chunk of minis. Yeah, like gigantic. And I would argue to say, too, that if we manage to get up to 2,000 sometime within the next month or two, if we maintain this, then we'll probably start giving away big chunks of paint, too. Oh. Like, now that it's uh, getting warmer and we can actually ship them without freezy? Correct. Well, that and, and once we kind of hit those other goals. Dinos. So we're going to have more rings raccoons out there with giant paint collections. Oh. That would be interesting. So, yeah, you guys, make sure to renew your subs, or if you forgot to renew your Twitch Prime sub, your free, free Prime subs. If you've got Amazon Prime, guys, you've got a free sub you can use every month. You have to remember to renew it. It doesn't automatically renew it once you subscribe to somebody. But it is absolutely free. You're getting it along with your Amazon Prime. So do use it. Abuse it. Give us, give us your sub. Please support us. Prove to the bosses that this is indeed a viable way for Reaper to, you know, support a streaming uh, slash uh, YouTube uh, department. Help us survive. Help Justin have a job. There we go. Help Justin have a job. Oh, I'm in, I'm in zero concern for whether or not that's in jeopardy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, there's, there's you're there's just so trying to motivate much stuff. Yes, so there's much so stuff. much stuff, but still. In fact, uh, if anything, this community that grows and keeps supporting us makes, really, it makes me more busy because the more it grows, the more I have to uh, push the envelope, take it to the next level. Make you know? Justin not be lazy. Sub our, sub our stuff. Make if sure only. Justin never has a break. Sub I remember back in the days when I worked production and I could be lazy. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. Not these days. No, no, not these days. All right. So there is our little happy dinosaur. 
he has highlights, his first layer of highlights. Now notice the key thing here is how little area I'm keeping that initial shadow color in. Really that initial shadow color was just laid down for the purpose of giving us some definition when we put this color over the top. Again, I'm not being really, you know, um, I'm just paint, I'm block painting, right? You can see my layers, you can see my, my differences, but it's fast. So we're working this way because it's fast and I want to get a result. Are you being a dork? Oh wait, I want to see, did you do it? You did it! Yes! All right, all right. Sorry, this, this Velociraptor, before and after, brought to you by Reaper John. <laughs> I had to cut the arm and reposition it. Yes, yes, I figured. So this is awesome. <laughs> this is fantastic, and I want you all to, like, spam Reaper John's face. Um, <laughs> totally, because uh, it needs to be. This is, this is now a thing. <laughs> Um, I love it to death. And the, note the hat actually fits in pretty well. You can yeah, do some putty work. I, I cut the inside out so it ah, fit his head. Ah, so it fit his head. Yeah, yeah. See, John has done some very cunning fast... See, see, he hollowed out the inside of the hat. Um, so yeah, John faces. Totally, we need John heads. <laughs> yes. Oh, about it. He's so pleased with himself. This is awesome. You guys, you guys better not have the excuses you don't have time to make stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't use the I don't have time thing. He just did that in five minutes. So yeah, what he did here is if you want to make your very own, he uh, cut the paw and positioned it more so that it was scooped up so that it could hold the instrument realistically. I mean, technically, you could also cut this one at the elbow and, and have him it. strumming it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you could. Um, and then he took the hat off of the Dice Guy Bard and hollowed out the inside so that the head, it would fit on the head better. And with a little putty work, you can even make a little brim yeah. probably to make it fit a little bit better, but he just slapped it right on there because Bones is awesome for conversions. Uh, yeah, in like five minutes. So the hat is from the dice guy, um, the high roller bard. 77647. 77647. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that is, that deserved screen time for sure. So now we need a top hat, <laughs> although it'd be harder to find a top hat in the, in our uh, existing models. You probably have to sculpt one for the Velociraptor. I'm sure I can find one. Um, yeah, Death Metal Bard, I would say so. You know, you could give him some leather straps and, you know, go crazy. Um, maybe some piercings, could pierce his little, little leg there. But yeah, so there you go, guys. There we are. <laughs> He's fantastic. Now mine is all jealous. He's like, aw, I could have had a hat. I could have had an instrument. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, John. <laughs> now you have to paint it. Um, <laughs> Avaceratops, roughly the size of a horse, a smaller crest and shorter horns than Triceratops found in family yeah, units. Fine. Easier to domesticate than a full-size Triceratops. You know, eventually we're going to actually locate the genes for domestication since we've already proved they exist. Um, I need to lower my lower my platform here. There we go. Now I'm now I'm better. Now my back is better. I'm starting to get my back going. No. By the way, for those of you with back trouble, when you paint, uh, this is a clue. Um, lower your seat or raise your work surface. It'll make your back stay more erect in the proper form, and uh, it helps. Trust me. All right. So here I've got a white with a little bit of the creamy ivory in it. I'm actually going to thin that one a little bit more. You know, and. I've always been looking to find a way to keep my back more erect when yes. I'm over here. So thank you for helping me with that. Yes. Are you going to lower your seat? Yes. Yeah, it really works. I mean... Because an erect back is something I've been looking for for a long time. Yes. <laughs> Actual posture, Justin? I don't know. All right. Mostly, I just don't want back problems. And I was starting to feel it in my lower back. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, you know, flying monkey paints, it's hard to, but it's hard to see what's going to be most popular. I don't know. I mean, they could. The problem with conversion packs uh, most often is that when you want to do something that's a weird size like this, you know, it's bigger than a standard human head. Um, at 28 mil, then it then it's it's just odd. I mean, yeah, we we've got a lot of conversion packs um, that have weapons, and we even have some miscellaneous stuff um, out there already in in uh, metal, just not in uh, bones, to the best of my knowledge. Am I correct on that? We have weapon packs for bones, but we don't have other conversion packs. Is that uh, right? The weapon packs, I don't. Did they ever formally release? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they didn't. I don't think they did. I think we were always trying to find a good 
I don't know, not a way to release them, but I think that was part of it too, is the packaging was kind of wonky. Because oh, they were big, remember? Oh, yeah, because they were big. Weren't there also styrene? Uh, yes. Yeah, I they weren't actually correct. bones. So, because in order to get weapons to uh, and little things to form well and not bend, um, at that time, the answer for us was styrene, which is the what Games Workshop uses to make their kits and also what we use to make our bases. Um, so, all right, so now you're on your mix of creamy ivory and pure white, and you're only going to put this on the upper surfaces. You're not going to worry about anything lower down. So this is the first true highlight. Now, white is really reflective, so that is part of why we put one, one highlight layer down on the underside of things. But now we're going to pay attention to where the light is falling. We do want to keep our highlight pretty broad. On every surface, you want it to take up 50% at a minimum. And at surfaces that are really raised up toward the top, you want to do uh, uh, <laughs> blender in a three blender in three D printer. People, yes, it's true, Sean. I'll, that's the way the market is going. That's why it, it really is more efficient for uh, for you to do little little stuff that's kind of niche like that is definitely more efficient for the community to do on such a platform because it might not be worth Reaper releasing it, but then you know it might be worth worth it for you if you really want those parts. Besides, we need more sculptors. And that's a great way to get in, is sculpting conversion bits. Just like in the old traditional sculpting days where the way to get in was to start with conversions and get comfortable enough with green stuff so that you felt like you could actually tackle a full model. Here we go. Do, do, do. So now I am actually using, um, I'm take, paying attention a little bit to the uh, direction of my brush strokes, but there we go. So he's, he may, we needed to take him down just a tad, Justin. I think he's blowing out a little bit on the screen now that I'm adding white. I'm not sure though. Maybe not. I think that's no. that monitor. On my end, yeah. I can, I can okay, see it. Okay, you detail. can see it? Good. Yeah, I use green stuff rings also. I got, finally, I mean, it took me two decades to get used to the darn stuff, so now I use it. Um, if I started uh, wanting to actually sculpt things that were other than one-offs, though, I'd have to, uh, I'd probably have to go 3D and learn it finally, because the uh, sculptors in the industry are like, don't even bother with green stuff anymore. Everybody wants a 3D print if you want to create something that a company wants to produce. And that's not totally true. Reaper still works with green and putting it on mold and stuff. But it is true for a lot of the industry. They, they are more interested in 3D these days. It does, uh, it depends though on, on what you're put producing it for. Because of course metal, you still need to make a mold. Okay. Life keeps interrupting your and watching. <laughs> Oh, um, not very, actually. I actually thickened it up, uh, Coffee Nerdery Beer, because it was a little bit too thin. So I would say maybe uh, seven drops of paint, one drop of water, or six drops to one. Eh, I, guess, I guess I did put a couple of drops in, but then I added more paint. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. It was pretty thick. I'd say six or seven to one, though. Yeah, yeah, it's not, I don't think it's worth getting uh, ZBrush until you're really emotionally invested rings because it is an eight or hundred, eight or nine hundred dollar program because it is the industry standard. Um, and certainly it's good to work, to learn on. There was like Blender is supposed to be pretty good to learn on though too. ZBrush is its own monstrous thing though. And there is definitely a learning curve. And that's why I say don't spend the money unless you're serious about it. Unless you're like, all right, here we go. I'm going to set aside the time to learn sculpting on ZBrush. Because otherwise, it's just a waste of almost a grand. Or I guess you can get a subscription to it now, but I always hate that. I'd rather own the program. I get nickel and dimed out of my bank account enough as it is. All right, so bringing up the highlight on the upper side of this tail. Pretty much covering up my previous coat because I want it white. And two, the, the call you're going to make here is also is how white do you want your raptor to be? 
but you can kind of make that decision in a little bit. Like you don't have to make that decision right now because if you turn out to get through this highlighting stage and you're like, oh, I lost my yellow and I really do think he needs to be more yellow, then you can do a glaze, which I will actually do in a little bit after I finish this particular layer. Again, just blocking out areas. He's looking very nice and white though. See, so very, very, uh, I think that uh, desert sand is actually a great base for white having used it on this now. If you want kind of a very neutral white, like uh, if you were working with muted color scheme and you didn't want something that was too yellow or too gray, this is a good mid, mid range um, brownish off white. Uh, starting color. All right. Yeah, Adobe makes me angry for the same reason, Rings. Yeah, I, I much prefer, I will always prefer a program that I can buy outright to one that I have to subscribe to. A little bit more. We'll start doing his upper upper lip here. Uh, no, War. I don't think you can. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it won't even let you like set it to auto renew if you really want to. That's... Nope, nope. You've got to do it once it's gone. Yeah, that's the kind of the frustrating that's why part. Why it's about it. it's uh it's good if you can just get in the habit of like setting it on like the last day of the month or the first day of the month. If you if you remember that you subbed close to the last day of the month, then you can kind of at least stick it in your brain that oh, it's the last day of the month. I need to resub. Um, it's probably the most effective way to do it. Set a phone reminder if you really want to be reminded. All right, so do do do. Actually, I think the top of this guy's head needs to go all creamy ivory because that's facing the light. Or most of it. There we go. All right, we left a tiny bit of shadow around that central ridge. Hey, right. Uh, no, Seanal, just the Twitch Primes, yes. The, the Twitch Primes you do need to make. Yeah, the regular yeah. Twitch ones will renew, no yeah. problem. Your Tier 1 will just renew, correct. Yep, you don't even have to remember. And for the pebbles on the back here, I probably uh, will use, I'll probably go straight up to the, my off-white, the creamy ivory and pure white mix and just hit those. And then I'll kind of see if I need something extra up there, but I think that's going to be pretty good, actually. Uh, leather. Rotting leather is usually just, like, dark. Um, and you may want to introduce some greens and ooky browns on it. Um, and just, I mean, yeah, rotting leather tends to just go very dark because the bacteria is infesting it, in my uh, opinion. But uh, it's a weird kind of thing. If I was going to do it, I probably would just go and make it gone, go all greenish brown and really dark browns and kind of use stippling to suggest that the edges are getting eaten away or anywhere around a hole would be eaten away. All right, so there's some pebblies and then we've got lots of little pebbles on the tail area, which is more just texture, but I can still hit a lot of it, so I will. Yeah, there we go. Mr. Albino Velociraptor, awesome. I'm happy with how this is looking. Now I'm gonna actually grab some, uh, I am gonna grab some liner for, some, for one reason, and that's to make the eyes, mouth, and everything else. Um, come out. I might not use, hmm, I might not use an actual liner. I might use like russet brown mixed with my base coat. So let's try that. I want to go darker, but I still want to stay in the yellowish kind of spectrum. So I'll pick russet brown, which is kind of a yellowy brown, yellowy dark brown, 9199. It's our burnt umber equivalent. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of desert sand, which is our base coat to make the two play well together. And we will see if that works to kind of set off the claws. 
Oh, yeah. I don't know. Does he even have leather on him? Isn't he, like, mostly metal and chain and stuff? I guess he's got straps. Um, I would just make it really dirty and dark and, like, kind of uh, light and unhealthy looking around the edges. I mean, I guess... There we go. So there's that color. There. I mean, old leather just pretty much just cracks and falls to pieces. Um, unless it's been wet a lot. And then, you know, then you can get a bacterial infestation, I believe, in, in leather. Um, but you'd have to look up pictures to see really how some of this stuff looks. I mean... What I would use Valandar is I would honestly just like stipple it, make it more of a, a greenish, unhealthy looking leather. Um, use some dark stippling to suggest like ground in dirt and uck and gook. I'm just going to fill in the area all around the teeth because then I can pick out the teeth in white. And if I want to put some pink, I'm just not convinced I can see the gums. So I can see the tongue, so I can put some pink and red on the tongue. But uh, often the gums aren't sculpted. And so it doesn't make sense to do the mouth in this area around here red because uh, it just looks like the raptor is wearing lipstick, which if you all want to do, you can. But I would rather not have a lipstick wearing raptor, so... I am just going to use the brown. Just not as dark a brown as I would use normally. Welcome to Raptor Dentistry. Yes. Do, 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 do. We'll get the other side of that. Oh, not enough paint in my brush. There we are. All right. Yes, if Bartoraptor wants to wear lipstick, he is okay. <sighs> oh, I see. Yeah. I probably would just use a lot of stippling to suggest some breaking down texture. Um, dark stippling, Valandar to suggest that it definitely is like soiled and beat up. And I would probably, if you start with a medium leather color, I probably would start with a medium leather color that's kind of neutral, like maybe shield brown. So I can use some dark greens, uh, could use some dark greens to suggest like growing, you know, fungus or something. And uh, um, things like walnut stippled in and black and brown to uh, suggest degeneration and holes. But I mean, that's, it's kind of a, an advanced thing at that point. Um, there's not really an easy answer on that. But just do your best. And remember to keep your paint semi-transparent and build it up in layers. You don't need it like really transparent, but you do need it thinned. If you try to do stippling with uh, thick paint, you just get a bunch of dots and it tends to not look good. Whereas if it's semi-transparent, you can build it up in layers and make it look natural. Or unnatural, as the case may be. There we go, we've got little claws, we've got mouth. You could also use some dark red to suggest uh, blood stains that are uh, setting, dark reddish brown. Eh. Yeah, but I can't see the gums. I can only see teeth. So that was my concern. It's just like a lot of these models, when they're this small, you're not going to see gums sculpted. A lot of dragons you can. Now there's gums right here. There's the mouth, you know, a membrane right here. So I could do that. Um, but I mean, I probably wouldn't do it much of a different color than I'm doing the raptor itself in that case. If it's grayish cream, that's exactly what we're painting with. At this point, the mouth is the least of my concerns. Um, 
more concerned about getting this guy to look white and then shifting his color. But I think I, I think he's pretty convincingly white, wouldn't you say, guys? Um, oh, and the eye. forgot the eye. I want a dark, dark rim around the eye also. Yeah, I'm going brown just because I want this so I can grab our base color and fill in the gums there. Blowing out the exposure on camera. See, that's what I thought it was, but Justin said he could see it okay on his monitor. Um, so it's possibly monitor and not camera. Um, I'm not seeing the whites blown out at all on the Raptor. I'm seeing the white in the palette blown out. Um, but I could be wrong. Definitely is, yeah, it's, it may be a monitor thing. We all know that everybody's monitor is a little bit different. Justin's monitor may just be more well-adjusted than ours. We could try to adjust it a bit. Yeah, it's, it's not. I mean, on the only even, blown out portion is the white on the, the palette itself. Yeah. But that's everything else I have, I've actual, de I can see brush strokes actually. Yeah. Yeah, you should be able to, since I'm working fast, you should be able to definitely see brush strokes. And that's a lesson. When I'm first painting stuff, guys, sometimes you can see brush strokes. Although, you know, if I'm really, really concentrating and taking my time, usually not. But, um, but it's, I mean, it's not a big thing. I usually fix it in post, <laughs> to use a video production term, um, meaning that I just futz with it to get rid of the brush strokes. So, okay, so say we've got our white raptor and we're like, yeah, and the key here, make sure you note, like, the key to painting white is making most of every little area white or near white. So, this guy reads pretty much as an albino raptor, so as far as the color goes. Now, let's say I wanted to, to I wanted him more yellow. Say that my white, see, now it blows out when I bring it up here. It blows out less the lower I drop it. Oh, is it the little? There we go. Ta-da! I still like the light for taking out shadows, but yeah, so okay. So say, so now, say I want him to go even whiter instead. He is yellowy now after I take off that. So let's say, let's glaze with white. Well, let's glaze with, maybe I'll glaze with yellow first and then I'll glaze with white. Ooh, all right. Let's take our creamy ivory. Let's try that. Throw a bunch of water in it. This is gonna be about two drops of water to one drop creamy, or no, stained ivory, sorry, because we want a nice yellowish color. Mix it up, you do not want a wash, you want a glaze. A glaze is transparent, it can be painted on a single thin layer and you can hardly see it. That's hardly seeable. If I put it on my palette, you can hardly see it. See it? It's colored water. Uh, for a good white, actually, uh, okay, so here's the dealio. If you start with a straight gray, fainity, um, you are actually going to look really monochrome. It's not going to look very real. Uh, always mix something else into your gray. That's why all the grays that I actually recommended earlier on, if you missed it, um, have brown in them. Weathered stone, wolf gray, aged bone, desert sand, which is what we used. These all have a different color of brown. Or if you're going to use something like magical pure white, use a blue with gray in it or a gray with blue in it, like snow shadow, um, this is moonstone, uh, or mix something. Uh, you don't want to use a straight out gray. It really doesn't look right when you highlight and shade it because gray, just a pure, no, no color gray just doesn't exist really in the environment. It's always, colors are always reflecting onto things like that. And so uh, just when you do it, it looks like a pencil drawing. Like it's, it just looks un, unreal. So for me, this is albino and albino is always yellowish. So I went with, I didn't want to go with a pure yellow though. I wanted to go with desert sand. So, but you can use any of these colors, any of the these browns, grays, even dusky skin highlight, which is a purple. If you want a purple sh um, undertone for your, uh, for your whites, you can do that too. All that matters is that it's in this neighborhood and that it has a bit of gray and another color in it. And it can be mostly that other color. It can be like a brown with a bit of gray or a blue with a bit of gray. 
but you don't want to use just a pure gray, in my opinion. This is, since this is albino, and since albino creatures tend to be yellowish, um, yeah, gray likes, makes it look like a black and white movie or a pencil sketch. Um, I found that out when I did uh, NMM, a model recently, or I guess last year for Dark Sword, that was mostly silver NMM or steel NMM. And uh, I did it without adding any colors into it, and it looked weird and artificial and pencil sketchy at the end. So I actually glazed colors into the reflections and the sky, and the sky parts. All right, so glaze with uh, creamy or stained ivory, which is very yellow. Stained ivory and quite dark. And we're going to just glaze this whole model. So we're going to big, take a big brush and paint it over all the surfaces. What this is going to do is tint everything a little bit yellow. The secondary effect that it is going to have is it is going to blend in all those uh, choppy brush strokes. It's going to help too. It's going to get a start on it. It's not going to fix everything magically. Um, then you always want to dry out, you know, get your brush mostly squeezed out and uh, grab all the stuff that might be pooling. You do not want a glaze to dry. It will dry in rings in a weird way. So you want it not to pool. This is the opposite of a wash. It is thinner than a wash. Your purpose is different and the way you treat it is different. So that really makes them look ivory. See, that actually is a very convincing like start on an albino. Now what, what happens when you do glaze with a darker color is that you usually do lose your highlights. So you have to apply your last layer of highlights after he's dry. We'll see how uh, he's not quite dry yet. We're uh, waiting to see how dark it took him. But you can see how dark that, that knocked it down. Um, now we could come back. Where is my, what brush do I want to use? This one. And the other thing I can do is glaze with a light color. If I feel like I really want him to be lighter, if I feel like this is taking him too dark, there's no harm. I can still see all my layers and I've got still some contrast, so there's no harm in doing a light glaze. Let's grab about a drop of white and then put two drops of water in it. When in doubt, go thinner for your glazes. I'm going to go to three to one with water on the white. You can always put extra layers of glaze on. You can never take them off. Wait till I'm totally dry. I am totally dry. If I decide I want this guy to be lighter, I'm going to put a white glaze. Now, glazing with light colors is difficult. Like, put it on fast. Wick it off fast. You need a just a kind of a perfect, very speedy application on this. And all right, there you go. And I'm putting it on really thick so that it doesn't dry wet right away. You notice the other one, I actually put it on thinner, so it started to dry fast. Here, I put it on thin. I rinsed out my brush, kind of squeezed the water out of it. Now I'm taking the tip and going back and removing the excess glaze. There, I think I got it all. Don't ever want this stuff to dry. It will dry weird. There's some I missed. Kind of look at wherever it would pool normally. There. Yeah, um, I would go with, uh, for mouse fur, I would go with wolf gray, actually, which I think is 9434. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, white mouse fur. Sorry, white mouse fur. Again, you'd start with one of the colors that I outlined, look at a white mouse, see what kind of shadows they might have. They probably would have a gray with a brown in it. I might use weathered stone. That would probably be a good start. And then I would go up from there. I would probably do, a do this color as your base, do a 50-50 mix of pure white and weathered stone for your first highlight. Get most of the fur with that. Just leave the original weathered stone just in the shadows and then continue to go with pure, pure white. Because white animals are like, you always see some sort of color in the shadows usually. Although with a white mouse, you may find that you need to, again, go more. It depends on if white mice are like, um, are yellowish. Like if they tend to be creamy or not. And you might go here if so. I was thinking of a light gray mouse, but a white. 
white might you might want to go just the way I did with this and just go up to pure white a lot more. So after a white glaze, notice it brings him up lighter again. We have lightened the entire Velociraptor. We have also, um, once again, kind of blended in our brush strokes. So he looks a lot more blended now than he did before. And I think I'm going to reapply my highlight, but I want to thin it more this time. Whenever you're close to white, always add more water to your paint if you don't want to see brush strokes quite so much. Uh, and it's noon, so I need to tie it up. I was going to do... Oh, I don't have red on my plate anyway. Haha, <laughs> I'd have to grab... Um, looks like we don't even have the clear red that was down here before. I see some red over there, but eh. You guys know what albino eyeballs look like. Let's see here. So then if I lost some of my highlights, I can reapply. So like that. Quick highlight on the rear leg. You can see how that really takes it up right toward white again. Yeah, that apricot shading, as they call it, toward the ears on your cat riot is uh, common in white animals that have not been bred to be pure white. Like you, to get a pure white, uh, like a, like Samoyeds, they had to breed for that color for decades. Um, otherwise, the natural white uh, tends to have bits of apricot in it or cream. It's the way that it tends to, that gene tends to express. And it also expresses in different ways, um, like the gene that causes white in Samoyeds and in uh, German Shepherd dogs causes yellow in Labrador Retrievers and blonde hair in humans. For those of you who wanted a little bit of science with your painting this morning. So a blonde human and a uh, golden retriever have that, uh, that genetic, that allele in common. So yeah, it does vary. Uh, that particular gene expresses differently depending on what breed or species. And it's not albino, which is different. Hey, Paul John's life, how's it going? Yeah, that's a specific, like, usually when you get pure whites like that, Vigos, it's, um, it's a little bit of a different, uh, that cat may have had genes from a breed that had been bred for pure white or may have just gotten lucky. Um, we did see a few pure white Shilohs in the old days. Um, but yeah, they didn't have really good pigmentation on the nose and uh, stuff, you know, not dark skin like we like to see. So those may influence each other. Although, there we go. Hello, Raptor. So yeah, just bringing the color highlights back up and that brings him right up back toward white. Um, and if I wanted him even whiter, I could glaze again with the white and really, really bring him up. I would lose some of my shadows. So you've got to ask how much uh, do you want your muscles and stuff to stand out. Um, yeah, that's, it can, yeah, it's, and it's, that's not necessarily the E. That's ne not necessarily the E locus riot. It could be uh, a gene that travels with it. Genes never travel singly. They always tra travel in groups called haplotypes. And so when you see something like that, a dysfunctional allele, um, often it's, it may be linked or it may travel with the original gene, uh, but it may not be. Or it could be a mutation, like uh, the Merle in, uh, the Merle gene in Collies and uh, Australian Shepherds is, uh, you never want to double on it, it can be a lethal gene. So sometimes it directly is linked to a specific expression. It's interesting. Genetics is uh, fascinating. Boop. Yeah, so one in three, right. So you've got another random wild card in that in play is what that says, that you've got a modifying gene in play for the deafness and the white gene. And not white is not tied to... Um, issues in all of uh, all animals and it is uh, 
not always on the same genetic locus. So yeah, fun, fun. Sure. Boop. 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 They're also right there, I believe, in the. Uh, the and then I glazed with uh, with the stained ivory because I wanted him to be more, more a little more yellowy. Miss Anne. Yeah. I believe they're in the command as well. Oh, there you go. So actual skew numbers there, if you want to reference. Exclamation point RTB. Rawr, he says. Rawr. So yeah, there we go. We painted a white velociraptor. We just didn't have enough time to do his, uh, his eyes and teeth and claws. Which is the problem with having a show that we want to be shorter. Yeah, rings. Uh, that's why I'm involved with the purebred uh, organization I am, is that we're actually breeding um, genetic diversity back into our dogs, which helps us keep away from genetic disease, but I could go on and on and on about that. That is, if you want that topic to come up, you should uh, put that in questionable Anne and have me go on for 10 minutes about why purebreds have a lot of genetic diseases. I can probably encapsulate it in five to 10 minutes and it will make you sad, but it should also make you happy because some breed organizations are trying to work against that now. All right. Oh, good. He has genetics. Yeah, definitely. Definitely post pictures of the Autumn Dragon when you get it. Very cool. All right, guys, any other questions? I'm going to wrap this sucker up because I got stuff I got to be working on downstairs. All right. Yes, Valandar is, is, is pushing my dog buttons. I just want to comment. <laughs> But I must stay off of canine genetics. Ah, I could do a whole show on canine genetics. I should just do a video for my organization and then just link it to you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, the Irish Wolfhound especially on that. As uh, there's, Those aren't the only two that are severely in trouble, Valandar. Look up uh, dilated um, yeah, cardiomyopathy in Dobermans. Uh, but yeah, so yes, yes, yes. Informed and entertained. That is the goal, Rings. Um, so yeah, cool. Awesome. But yeah, yeah, I love Irish Wolfhounds too. I thought about um, asking if uh, that's actually one of the breeds I pushed for Outcross, but people weren't quite ready for it. And to talk more about that, we can talk about it later. Uh, yeah, that's true. If I paint a dog or wolf and warg, we will be on topic. Uh, sheer fabric sometime. Yeah, I actually just did trans. Did I just do transparent fabric for the Patreon? I want to say I did. Yes, I think I did. Yeah, I did. I did do translucent uh, sheer fabric for my Patreon recently, if you're on there. Um, I don't remember what level it was at. It may have been a $10 level. Um, but uh, it was, uh, my Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, for those who have not gotten on there, I know a lot of you were on there. Thank you so much. I love you all. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah, but Great Danes, actually the big breeds don't really need uh, a lot of space. That's a great thing about, about giant breed dogs is that they don't usually have a ton of energy. So they're actually better, like greyhounds are better apartment dwellers than you think they are. Um, even though they're really big dogs in general. Um, I don't think we have a wolfhound miniature. That would be a good one to do. Thank you for, for Anne's Patreon uh, spamming their planner. Uh, question for Justin, what's the mini cam here versus the one Anne uses at home? Uh, the one you use at home is an IPVO. VZX? I, yes, thank you. I can't VZ-X. That. that one is the Hovercam 8. Um, and is actually, as we discussed earlier, its HDR capabilities are pretty bad. Um, it also likes to tent things sometimes for mm. no reason. Have a cast, um, yeah. It, it's, Color cast. I, and I, obviously, I haven't tested the IPVO very well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for using it for videos for a couple months now, right. and uh, using it for when we stream from home. Um, so yeah, we haven't we haven't run the IPVO through like I haven't been using it for a year yet. Right. But so far, I like it a lot better um, than what I was using, which was a webcam, a C nine twenty C webcam from Logitech. Now I will say, when we shift to the big studio, I'm going to have overhead mounted rigging for uh, big big boy professional cameras mm -hmm. um, to do what this is doing. 
Yeah. Because uh, that's to me, that's more robust, and that's what it's designed for. Right. This poor little camera here is being pushed to its limits, and it just wants to take pictures of, of documents. Yes, yes, it's, it is. Uh, it, it obliges. I don't know. Yeah. A bunch of people, when I was reading uh, about my IPVO, though, there were many people in the comments who were like, I stream with this all the time. So, oh, okay. yeah, that's part of what made... I, I read almost all the comments on the dang camera just to make sure, because I wasn't going to blow 300 bucks from my Patreon money just, you know, for that's something fair. to break. So That's fair. So, uh, yeah. Well, I've told Bishop Odo, I've told Ron before that we need different breeds of dogs. So you guys really should uh, mention that on Reaper Live tonight uh, with Ron and Ed. You have access to the art director, Ron Hawkins, who makes the decisions about what we make. So if a bunch of you go, hey, Ron, we need different breeds of dogs. We need a wolfhound and a bloodhound and a collie and a German shepherd and a beagle and a pug, although we have a pug somewhere um, because Jason Weeby. But, you know, then ask him. Yeah, let's not. Come on, Monohost, though. Some of us who are not into pugs really want other breeds of dogs, too. Like we, we definitely I know we had a pug in the past in, uh, in a familiar thing. Um, Actually, uh, Victoria, uh, Victoria Lamb of Victoria Minis, Velandar, has bearded collies. She would agree with you completely. In fact, I'm sh sh stunned that she has not sculpted one yet. But yes, I would love collies. We have actually the, little, the two little warlord um, war dogs for the Crusaders. I painted one as a border collie and it worked perfectly. Yeah, but I mean, look at the freaking uh, Dungeons and Doggies Kickstarter, right? Obviously, people want, I mean, given those were cute adventurer dogs, but people want, want purebred dog breeds. Or, or we could also have a selection of mutts um, just based on various breeds, both tweaks. That would be fun. So, yeah. So, totally bug Ron tonight. It's at uh, 6 p.m., correct? 6 p.m. USA Central Time? Uh, tonight, yes. Yes. But before that, what but else? Before what else that, we have Painting Platinum with Sadie. If you want to come and hang out while she paints the Reaper Learn to Paint Kit 2. At 3 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, yes. Sorry, at 3. My problem. My mistake. All um, right. I'm going to go ahead yeah. and start the raid here while we Who finish are we our demise. We are raiding Jimmy the Brush. Oh, okay. We haven't raided Jimmy for a while. No, we have not. He probably was sad and lonely. It looks like uh, Princess is painting the... I don't think it's the Learn to Paint Kit orc, but it is... It looks like it's one of our orcs. Oh, okay, cool. Or Princess if it is isn't one of ours, it's very, 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 very similar. Indeedy. It was so. great to see you guys. So, yeah, bug Ron about purebred dogs because I bugged him about it before. And hearing it from you guys will reinforce it. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys, and hopefully we will see you at uh, 3 o'clock. Yeah. And then Be 6 awesome. o'clock. Thanks very much, guys. Spread the Reaper love. Have Be a great awesome, day. And have a great day. <laughs>